Hello everyone, my name is Mi Chang and welcome to my new series, The Beginner's Guide. I'm just going to make this quick disclaimer for two reasons, one being there are a couple of hiccups in the recording so you may notice a couple of skips in the episode. I did my best to keep the entire experience intact so hopefully it won't be too distracting. Reason number two, I just wanted to say that the first episode that we ended up recording was a little bit too long so we decided to split it up into two or three parts, I haven't decided how many yet because I've only edited the first episode. Well, with all of that in mind, I hope that you guys enjoy this new series, and uh, let's get on with it. See ya. Alright, hey, what's up, everybody? It's me, Chang, here. Can we start that again? Sorry. Okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, oh, yeah. I was, like, cleaning my teeth. I was like, oh, <laughs> right. You're going to put this in the bloopers. <laughs> <I'm probably fine." laughs> hey, guys, what's up? It's me, Chang, here, and uh, today I am joined by... Kyle! And this guy? is the uh, beginning of our uh, new uh, mini-series. I assume this is going to be a series because it seems like it's going to be too long to do one for, one video for. Yeah. So anyways, this is the Beginner's Guide, which is apparently made by the same guy who made the Stanley Parable, which um, is known for being, you know, pretty crazy. So I thought this would be um, interesting, interesting to see their next uh, another one of their works because it, it, it seems cool. And uh, we watched... All we know about this is that we saw this, this really trippy trailer and... Um, we really know nothing about this game other than that. Like, because the trailer didn't really go into too much detail or anything. No, nothing. Just... So, um, yeah, let's, um, let's uh, hop into the game. Um, good. Do you want to start? or Yeah, yeah. let's have you start. Alright, I'll start. How about that? Let's begin the game. Begin game. So, let's see what happens here. Make sure audio is on. That's, audio. That sounds great. Audio um, is on. Audio is on. Controls is... Okay, that's what I thought that would be. Yeah, that's what I figured. So just... Uh, I think you gotta use WASD. Yep. Hi there. Okay. Thank you very much for playing The Beginner's Guide. My name is Davey Reedon. I wrote oh. The Stanley Parable. And hey, while Davey. that game tells a pretty absurd story, today I'm going to tell you about a series of events that happened between 2008 and 2011. We're going to look at the Sounds games made by a friend of mine named time. Coda. Now, these games mean a lot to me. Uh, I met Coda in early 2009 at a time when I was really struggling with some personal stuff. And his work pointed me in a very powerful direction. I found it to be a good reference point for the kinds of creative works that I wanted to make. So just to start you off, this is, I think, the first game he ever made. It's a level for Counter-Strike. Oh. You can oh. roll around here, by the way. And uh, mostly it's just... Coda learning the basics of building a 3D environment. But what I like is that even though he starts yeah, from the I'd simple like aesthetic of a desert town, he then scatters these colorful abstract blobs and impossible floating crates around the level. And of course, it blob, destroys the illusion that this actually is a desert a town, yeah. and instead this level blobs becomes a kind of calling card from its creator. It's like a reminder that this video game was constructed by a real person. Hmm. And it kind of makes you wonder. What was going hmm. through his head as he was building this? This is what I like about all of Coda's games. I mean, not that they're all fascinating cool. as games, but that they are all Let's going to go. give us oh. access it's to it. their creator. Here. I want us to see past the games Coda's themselves. I want to get to know There's who this human again. being really is. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. So, it's 2008, Boy. Coda Ooh. starts making these games, and he never releases any of them. He doesn't put them onto the internet, he just makes them and then just immediately abandons them and they sit on his computer forever. Right, any other and I think he really understood this image what? of himself as a recluse. Uh, at one point he jokingly renamed his computer's recycling bin to Important Games Folder. So, you know, this was just how he worked. He tended to crank them out one after the other without even really pausing to try to understand what he had just made. Until suddenly one day, he just stopped. In 2011, that was it. He made his last game, and then he hasn't made another one since. And that's why I've taken this opportunity to gather all of his work together. Is because I find his games powerful and interesting, and I'd like this collection to reach him, to maybe encourage him to start creating again. And if the people like you who play this also happen to find his work interesting, then I'm sure it'll just send that much stronger of a message of encouragement to Coda. So thanks for joining me on this. If you have a particular interpretation that I haven't mentioned here, or if you just need to get in touch, mm -hmm. you can email me at d-a-v-e-y-w-r-e-d-e-n at gmail.com. Okay, that's about it for introduction. Let's take a look at Coda's first proper okay. game. As each game is loading, I'll show you the date mm -hmm. that it was completed. This first one was made in November 2008. 
okay. This is this is trippy so far. I'm I'm in, I'm enticed. This I is like really this. cool. No, this is uh, it's a really neat oh. concept so far. Uh, All right. Hold on. Whoa. Oh, geez. Wait, wait, what's that say? Don't look. Are you All right, kidding? It says, chill, uh, whis- chill. Okay, whisper machine status active. This game is called Wait, Escape from Whisper, and it's one outside. of the more generic games you'll see from Coda. Uh, it looks like Halo, really. Uh, yeah, something like that. Run, I, no, it makes me want to think more of like, like we're playing like Star Wars or something. You know? You can yeah, press to that. fire the gun. Or, uh, no, there's a game. Uh, it's uh, I can picture it, but I don't know what the name of it is. Uh, so we're playing this developer's unfinished games? Finished games? Uh, I, think they're, I think they're unfinished. Well, this is nuts. That's cool that you can shoot stuff. Oh, yeah. Geez. Oh, let's see what we got here. Well, we're escaping something. What? It kind of looks like this game was abandoned mid-development. For instance, you oh. have this gun, which you'd think would indicate that there are supposed to be monsters or enemies somewhere. But then clearly there are no enemies anywhere. Nope. You can't even reload the gun answer. when you run out of bullets. But ultimately, we don't really know. Maybe Coda thought that actually it was complete was that the way that, that it is. Wall. And I think that we should talk about his games for what they are, rather than for what they're not. I love how you can see the bottom of the universe from this room. <laughs> the bottom of the universe uh, is a giant square. Wow. Imagine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is... The gun is jammed right now, also, or something. Like no, it just... It Apparently the ammo. space station has a labyrinth alone. on it. I... Uh, sure, I don't know. There's really no reason for it that I've ever been able to uh, discern, so in amazing. the interest of time, I'm just gonna skip you on past oh. oh, okay. You just took it out of the maze. Okay, this is the part that's interesting. The game has this narrative about the whisper machine, and how it has to be turned off, and then you get to the engine room. Oh boy. What is the whisper? Is that the whisper machine? Hey, you there in the engine room? Uh, you could save us all. That beam is powering the whisper machine. We could disrupt it by introducing a great enough heat signature. If you, your body could stop the beam. It's so much to ask, but for all of our lives. Oh wow. Could you do it? Could you give yourself? I think I would. Sacrifice yourself for yeah. the ship, essentially. No, for the people. For everybody? For the universe? Yeah, for the universe. I would fucking do it. Big square needs to be protected. Oh, man. Let me pause here for a second. What you just experienced, stepping into the beam and then dying, is probably what Coda had initially intended when he was developing this level. But when he first compiles and plays it, something goes wrong. There's a bug somewhere. And this is what happens instead. Uh, is it just restart? Uh, oh, no, I just do it again, I think. Do it again? Yeah, just go in. No, I guess it's going to be like an infinite loop. Or, huh? oh. Look at that. Are we going away from it? Yeah, we're... Oh, gee. The beam causes you to start floating. And this is an is important the, moment the for him. Because, yes, this is technically a glitch, but Coda identifies something we just about it. it. Like how small it makes you feel in the face of this larger chaotic system. Or this floating could be the afterlife, a peaceful place, juxtaposed against all of the hysteria that you've just had to traverse. I, I don't even know. Uh, I have no idea what he was thinking. But what's clear is that after making this, something lodges itself in his brain. He wants to do more of these really weird and experimental designs. So he stops work on this and moves on to a stream of tiny little games that oh go in boy. all sorts of directions. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first game he made after leaving this one behind. Here, you take the next game. Okay. Oh, jeez. This is... I'm... Yeah, I'm, I'm like, interested. Is... Oh, jeez. The past was behind her. Oh. Well, what's uh -oh. in front of her, though? This wall, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? How do you... You're yep. missing the... In this oh, yeah. game, you can only walk backwards. Oh. 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 That's why I can't move forward, huh? Okay. Okay. Looks like there's just, uh, just brick walls so far. I'm, yeah, I'm waiting I'm, for something really big to jump out. So oh, it's a short few... and relatively oh. minimalist experiment combining motion and why narrative. The future keep changing. It is less advanced than oh. the previous oh, game, that, but actually there was a, it seems definitely to be something more there before, focused, And more then there complete. wasn't, and now there's something here that wasn't before. When well, she stops and looks, it becomes clearer. Oh, God. So she looks behind. 
Wait, right before you, right before you get to the, the door, can you look behind? Can you turn around and look at the door? Okay. But if the future is always behind her, how, how will she, she find, find the strength that will come out of this sounds horrifying to confront, to confront it? it. Wow. It's a short little thought, it says what it wants to oh. say, and then it ends. Didn't need anything more than that. Huh. Which to me is why it works, because it gets out quick. Okay, next one. Yeah, you take the next one too. Okay. Hello everybody, this is me Chang here. I hope you enjoyed our first part of our first episode. If you liked the video, please leave a thumbs up, you know, share it with everybody else because this is a very interesting game in my opinion. And subscribe if you haven't already so you can keep up with this new series. So until the next video guys, I've been me Chang, so see ya.